Okay, yes, I see the number of attendees stopped growing uh, heavily. So let me just start our webinar. Uh, today, we will show you a presentation about Live Docs, which is a really uh, useful and handy feature of MemoQ. But before diving deep into that part, let me just quickly do some housekeeping. The webinar is recorded and uh, it will be available on our website. You will get an email notification when we uploaded it. And uh, it, the presentation itself will be around 60 minutes long. And then we will have time for uh, some questions to answer. It's scheduled to have about 15 minutes. Please make sure to use the Q&A pane of the Zoom panel where we can see your questions. I will check the chat as well, but the Q&A part is, is the better where, where you can post them. We will also share the QA sheet with you, uh, all of you who are joined today. So don't worry if any of your questions will not be answered here today, you will receive an answer later. So let me just move forward and introduce our uh, lovely pleasant uh, presenter, Luz Elena, who holds a BA degree in translation. She knows amazingly a, a lot of languages, English, uh, French, Portuguese, Spanish, and she also has an MD uh, for Applied Linguistics and joined the translation industry uh, about 20 years ago, which means that she started working as a six-year-old. She started using MemoQ in uh, 2009, and she joined the team two years ago as a technical solution specialist. And since then, she's uh, one of the uh, lovely part of the team who uh, try to show how MemoQ can help for a lot of organizations and stuff like that. So without further ado, let me just give the mic to her. Thank you, Vince. And yeah, it's, I, I started, it's not that I'm getting old, it's just that I started when I was six. Uh, so thank you, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm really honored to be able to, to, to talk, uh, to walk you through this amazing tool we have uh, in MemoQ. Let me just start by by sharing with you that recently my dearest colleague uh, Jure sent us a, a, an internal survey in, in MemoQ asking which was the best feature that we would consider uh, within MemoQ. And you may guess that the first answer was live docs. So we, as memo queuers, we think this is a huge differentiator against other tools. And we also feel it's underused. So hopefully today we will be able to change that. And if you are not using it yet, I hope you will start soon. So we can get started. Um, uh, we can see the agenda just very quickly. We will first see how you can make the most of your filing cabinet so we can see the, what you will be able to store there. Uh, then we will see how those documents will become alive during your translation process. We will also see how you can align them if you need to do so. We, we will see how we can export those alignments to translation memories if you want to do so. Uh, we will also use uh, the live doc settings. Uh, we will explore interactions with other modules really briefly there. And we will also see how we will set up. AGT from Livebooks, okay? And then we will have some questions from you. So yeah, let's get started. I will start sharing my screen if that's okay. Someone please confirm you can see it. Yes, we can see it. Perfect. So I, I will just start as a project manager, right? I am working from my server and I have this project here that we will use today. Let me bring it to the correct screen. There it is. And uh, let me just show you. You may have already guessed by my accent that I am a Spanish speaker. So I will use an English into Spanish project just in case I need to translate. And I have one document here. And I also want to show you. I feel like I will be doing magic. So I want to show you that there's no trick behind this. Uh, I, am, uh, I, I have a translation memory that is completely empty. Okay. So uh, there we go. And let's start with live docs. So first of all, let me show you where you can find them in case you don't know. So we can always find them in the resource console here. If we go, we will be able to see that live docs is there, right? And we can also, we will always be able to create new uh, corpora here, right? But 
Lightbox is always present within your products, as you can see here. So today we will use it from the product. The difference is when you use it from the product, it already knows the languages that you will be using. Okay. And so I will create one. Just let me create one. It's just everything is opening on the other screen. And we also have a Zoom menu. There it is. And let me just give it a name. Let's put the same name. I'm copying it. There it is. So there we go. So now we have our filing cabinets, as we can see with the icon here. And we will start, we will start saving our documents, right? Uh, this is a way in which you can organize all your research. As translators, we usually spend a lot of time doing research, and sometimes we find ourselves having to repeat it because we didn't save it properly, because we didn't have a place to store it. So this is where you can really uh, save everything that you have found useful. Now, I will start by importing a reference file. So let me just go find it. Um, I should be able to find it here. And I am importing a reference file now. So this will be a video. Okay, everything, there it is. Now I will give it a description. Um, the description would be kind of the, the labeling that we would have in, in our, in our LiveDocs corpus, right? So let me just uh, find the description. Here we go. There we go. Let me paste it. So again, this is a this is this is a description. This is really a labeling that you can give to your documents. This was a request by our users uh, because sometimes the the name of the document is not explanatory, right? It's not showing what you can find there. So we can use a description, and I will include the language, right? What the what this button here is saying to MemoQ is that we will import a binary file. So basically, it's not a text file. If you have been LiveDocs users for some time now, you, you know that before we only had this button and that we had to change the filter and use the one named import as binary, right? But it was not really clear. So some users asked for this one, and now we have it. So what this is telling MemoQ again is that there's no need to extract any text from there. Your document can contain text, but it will not be extracted. And so that means it will be stored, but it will not be available in the translation grid. Now I have my, my video there. I would be able to visualize it from here, and my translators will also be able to visualize it. Now let me import a document. And now I want to import a monolingual document that can be useful for me because maybe I want to know how a certain word is used in English. It may help me understand how I should better translate it. Let me just find, there it is. And now here, uh, what we can see is we can define the language. This one is in English. And this is also very important important, we could change the filter. This also means that we could have different different documents, sorry, different file types, and you could import them. Okay, so let's click on OK for now. Let's give it a second. Now, the advantage there is that this will be available in the translation grid, and you will be able to do concordant searches from there. Okay, so you will not need to leave MemoQ to have to search within your reference documents. Okay, now let's import one in the target language. I want to import one into Spanish because maybe this is a document uh, which uh, style I need to emulate. I want to adhere to the terminology. Maybe this is a good example of how I should write. Okay, so maybe here I will just need to indicate to MemoQ that this is in Spanish. And as you can see here, we have keywords. I will talk about that in a second. And we will always have the description. If you have not used it there, you also have the option to just start writing here. I'll show you in a second. But here we could say, uh, just a sec, it's just I opened it instead of writing there. But in any case, you can write there. Let me go back to our project. Here it is. And there, as you can see, we can start writing. There we go. OK, so that is also possible. Now, I also want to align documents. 
This is really important, in my opinion, right now, because we have, uh, as, you, as you may have seen, I am going to translate something about GDPR. So I am going to translate, uh, and I can use the official documents coming from the European Union, right? Uh, my team will be sharing with you, Ben, so if you can share the, the website in the chat, what I wanted to show you here that I find really useful is that, uh, there you go. And what I wanted to show you here is that if I look, this is the, the European website where you can find all the regulations. So for example, here I could search for GDPR, which is what I did. And we will be able to see that you will find the regulations. You can download them, for example, in HTML, which is a better format than the ugly PDFs. And you can align them as I will do. That is one of the cases, right? Now, recently I had uh, a client, uh, Gaela and uh, Pierre, if you are there, uh, hi. They wanted to, to import this very uh, website because they, they are Canadian and they are translating from English into French. And this is a website where they could find terminology that they use uh, lots of things, right? So what we did is download the HTML, we can always save it. And uh, and then, uh, let me just find it. I have um, I have this one in French. So I'm sure we would find the option, but I'm a bit nervous. So uh, it's again in, okay, enregistré. Uh, so you could download the, the website as an HTML file, and you would be able to align them. Once you have it in English, then you can use the French, and you would be able to align them, right? So that's uh, another idea. And one more, let me start importing. Uh, I would go here and add my alignment pairs. I will use the source document. And let me go find it, here it is. And I will also add my target document, right? Now, the value there is that MemoQ will align them automatically for you. And you will be able to use that alignment as a translation memory on the fly without having to review every single segment that was included, right? One more thing I wanted to mention before leaving this window is here you have a filter. I am using Word documents, but this also means that you could use Excel files. For example, if you have those multilingual Excel files where you have several languages, you could create translation memories from there or live docs corpora from there and decide that you will use the, the Excel filter. Uh, we also have the Excel filter. And uh, there you would be able to decide which column is a source and then use the same file to add the target. Okay. For now, let's click on OK. Once again, the advantage there is that this will be immediately available for you to pre-translate from there. And there's one more advantage there. The fact that the formatting and the, the flow of the documents will be preserved. So basically the whole document will be there for you because basically a translation memory will become an endless chain of segments, right? With that will not necessarily follow the order of the documents. Whereas with live docs, you will always be able to, to keep that formatting. So for now, let me just import more documents. I wanted to show you as well that here I can add source folder structure. So there's no need to do it one by one. You can just go ahead and import the whole folder. And MemoQ is asking us if those are the, the documents that we do want to include. I can say yes. I also want some target documents. So I will find my Spanish structure here. I'll just go back and find the Spanish. There it is. And here we go. So as you can imagine, MemoQ will uh, base the, the this, uh, matching of those documents with the name of the document. And usually we use the language extension, right? But if it didn't get it properly, you can unlink the documents and you will also be able to align them. Okay, let's click on okay. Now we have one more case that we can go through. Uh, we can also import XLIF files. We can also import bilingual files, right? 
even translation memories. We now know that we have imported a video. We also imported one monolingual English document, one monolingual Spanish document. Well, we aligned two monolingual documents, one English and one Spanish. And now we are also aligning monolingual documents contained in folders. Okay, so there we go. And uh, as I was saying, we can also import bilingual documents. So right now I will import an XLIF. It could also be a translation memory, which will also allow me to preserve the, the order of those. I'm having an issue here because we have uh, there the menu, the Zoom menu is um, there. Uh, there we go. So here, what I can do is decide that maybe this is something that my client sends me, right? So let's think of an XLIF file that your client sent you as a reference, but you're not sure. So maybe at a certain point we can do something for now, we can use the keywords to say, this is an external file, this is not ours. So we will know, okay? Again, if we decide to import a translation memory, maybe once again, you are not sure about the quality, you may not want to import that without knowing about the quality directly to your translation memories, right? That's, I'm sure that that has happened to, to all of us. So what you could do is import it in live docs and penalize it. We will be able to see how that works. Uh, so for now, I have, once again, one video, I have two monolingual documents, I have three alignments and one bilingual document, okay? So I am ready, I am set up, and now I want to launch my project and say everything is ready. And so I will become the translator and I will start translating. So let me check out the project. There we go. Now we will become the translator. There it is. So let's take a look at uh, how our documents will become alive. First, you may remember our translation memory was empty and we are still seeing a result here. This result is coming from the monolingual English documents that I included, right? So this is already telling me something. Now, I also have, if I go to segment number four here, I also see a different icon, right? These two, these two pieces of a sheet are showing that this is coming from the bilingual documents, the bilingual XLIF I imported, right? So, and as a translator, I already see something weird. These URLs do not match. So ha, we may need to take this with a pinch of salt, right? We will see. So for now, let me just uh, do a concordance search to see what that can do for us. As you know, the shortcut is Control K. I am just putting it here now. And let's look for the word whereas. And let's see what it can do. Okay, so we will have different icons appearing. And let's just take a look at the first two. So for now, this one, the, the blue sheet and then with a yellow shadow, is showing that this is coming from our monolingual document, the one we imported in English. That also shows because there's no target, right? And now we have the results coming from our alignment documents. We will always be able to see where they come from, right? Where those results come from. But something that is also really good is that you will be able to open those results from here. I just right clicked on the icon and I can open the document. And then I will be able to see where that comes, where that result comes from. And as you can see, if I close my window for a second, I, uh, I will be di directed to the actual segment. And this is what I was telling you. The, the huge advantage with Live Docs is that we didn't lose the flow of the text. It's not just segments, it's exactly how the text was appearing, okay? So that already shows, we will see the alignment in a second. Now let's do one more concordance search. And let's suppose that I want to look for the word consent. Here we go. So as you can see, once again, I have one result coming from my alignment. 
one result coming from one monolingual document, right? Then, well, we will see some, some more things. Now I can see that I have 61 total hits. Now I want to see if this was always translated as consentimiento, so I will filter the targets. Okay, so now I got 55 hits. So this means that there are 60, uh, six, uh, six hits that are uh, having something different, right? So let me see how many have autorización. Oh, there is one. And I can also see that this is coming from the icon, from the, from the XLIF, from the bilingual document, right? So let's see if we have one with aprobación. We also have one with aprobación. And once again, it's coming from the XLIF, right? So yeah, I am already noticing that this was not consistent because consent was translated as consentimiento in the GDPR document, and they don't seem to follow, at least always, that terminology, and they seem to be a bit inconsistent. So we may need to penalize that. We will see how it goes in a second. For now, let's also see uh, certain things. For now, let me just pre-translate the documents. And... I want to show you, even if you know that my translation memory is empty, we can always click here and decide why, uh, where we would pre-translate from, right? So here, I know that there's my translation memory, I could have more, and I could have more live docs corpora, right? So let's click on OK, and let's go. Yeah, everything looks good. There we go. So we already got some hits, right? Let me just skip uh, and go to directly to... Segment number seven, okay, I see a 100% coming from, you may already uh, be getting familiar with the icons. This is coming from my EXIF. If I go to segments, let me just check the segments number, segment number nine, also coming from my EXIF, right? Now, let me just skip some and let me use go to, uh, control shift G in case you don't know the shortcuts. And let's go to segment number 35. There we go. So this is coming from our alignments. We now know because we are getting to know the icons, right? So this is the two sheets with the two lines there. This is coming from the alignments. Again, I could be able to open it from the, the translation results pane as well as we did with the concordance search here. And I would be directed once again to the segment where this comes from. This is really important for our clients coming from life sciences because sometimes they have to pre-translate uh, from forms that are official, uh, for example, from uh, medicines or yeah, basically forms. And so they will always be able to pre-translate with the official documents and they will also be able to see and, to see and open those from the very translation grid without having to leave MemoQ to find the PDF where they got that from, okay? So this is uh, once more an advantage. And let's go and see number 38. We have an 85%. Now, if you are Spanish speakers, you may notice that this translation is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not actually an 85%, it's 100%. Uh, this is also, we know that this is coming from our alignment, right? Those two sheets joined by the two lines. And my point here is that live docs and the alignments basically more, yeah, let's be more accurate. The alignments will be penalized with a 15%. We will see it in a second, but let's just know that. Because to me, when I pre-translate, it's already useful to know that an 85% match is the, the, the highest percentage I will get if I have not reviewed my, my alignment, okay? So now let me go to, I am looking for the numbers of the segments. Let me go once again to go to, well, we were really close, but let's use go to. And let's go to segments number 44. Now, there, we may notice that actually this is a wrong alignment. This is not correct. These two belong together. The withdrawal is la retirada, and the data, the data subject is 
uh, el interesado. Okay, so what can we do? Now that we know that this is useful, right? Our alignment is already being really useful, so we may want to correct it now that we know that it will pay off. But once again, if I don't want to, to spend time without, the, without being in the know, then I can just go ahead and use it. Let me open it. Once again, I am right-clicking, show document, and there we will start the editing, okay? To do that, what I need to do is come to, the, to edit the document, click here, maybe a bit hidden. And there, once again, I was directed to the actual segment. And so I want to tell MemoQ that actually this is this one. So I will create a link between those two sentences. Let's create a link. Okay. And now let's go back to our document and see what happened. Oh, there it is. This was the one. Of course, this was the one. So the data subjects, uh, now we can see a 90% a 90 instead of the 85%, we are looking at a 90%. So we already know, and we can conclude that once that one of the penalties, a 5% of the penalty comes from not having confirmed those links, right? Once again, if I open it, I can see that this is a blue link now, and it means that this is confirmed, which removed that 5% penalty. Now let's remove the 10% that we still have. Let's edit the document once again, and let's click on alignment is finished. Before I do that, of course you can keep doing, keep aligning sentences. You could also split and join sentences. You can, for example, let me do something. You can write on them. So as you can see, this is really powerful. Now, once that I'm done working with my alignments, I could also say these two belong together, right? So I will create a cross thing here. Once that I am done, I can end the editing. And now let's go back and see what happened. Sorry, edit documents. Here, I have to click the box. This is all good learning because I forgot to click here. This is what is indicating MemoQ that I have already checked my alignment and that everything looks good. Okay, so now I can end the editing and now this will change. There you go. Now we have a 100%. So what is it that we can conclude here? We can say that when we confirm links and when we finish the alignment, so when those two conditions are met, then the 85% will become a 100%. Uh, once again, we will see why that happens in a second. Now, let's open once again our alignment, show the document, there it is, and let's see how we could export the document. I, could, I would need to edit it once again, and I, will, I would be able to export it to my translation memory. I usually don't do this because I find several advantages. Once again, when I am translating from LightOps, I will benefit from that 85% match from, from actually from the 15% penalty, let's put it that way, because I know that an 85% is the best match I will get from live dogs once when I have not checked it. It is useful also in that I will pay more attention to those. Okay. So to me, it's better to not even have to create a translation memory, but just to have this immediately available for me. Now, if I want to export a translation memory or if I am aligning documents because I know I will need them and I, I still want to create a translation memory, I can do it. And this is the way to do it. So I would just need to click here and I would need to decide on the criteria. You could only export blue links, which are the ones that are confirmed, right? You would also be able to store the name of the documents you would be able to store keywords in a certain field in one of, the, uh, of our metadata fields. That could be useful in case you want to penalize them later in the, in the translation memory. You would also be able to modify the user, it being you because you are creating the alignment, or keep the user from the document. And you would also be able to, uh, to modify the, the creation modification date. So now, because I am creating the alignment right now, 
or use the timestamp the timestamp in the document. One advantage of creating translation memories or exporting them to a exporting your live docs to a translation memory is that they will save the origin. They will save the fact that this these segments are coming from a live docs corpus, and then with the translation settings, you would be able to penalize those segments coming from here. So for now, let's click on OK. And now this is exported to my translation memory. So this is the way in which you could build translation memories from labs. Now let's go to the famous 85% that I've been talking about. But let's also imagine that our uh, as, as translators, we have already noticed that the quality of that XLIF we received as a reference is may not be the best. So we may want to take it with a pinch of salt. If that's the case, we can call our, let's suppose that we call our project manager and say, yeah, let's, uh, it's not the best quality. Let's, yeah, you may want to let the others know that we need to, to really check that document. So what can the project manager do? Let's go back to being the project manager. Let me just say close this right now. We will go be the project manager once again. And the project manager can say, okay, so if it's not the best quality, I may want to penalize that document. To do that, what I can do is go to settings. And here, the sixth button here is the live doc settings. You can always find those settings in the resource console as well. If you go here, we can always see the live doc settings here. Okay, now I am working on my project. I will change because we cannot modify the defaults, as you know, we just need to clone it. I am already using the copy. So let me edit that. And first, let's take a look at that. Let me just mention here that there are a lot of users that don't come here and still get a lot of value from LiveDocs. So there's no real need to come. But if you start testing and clicking, the, the effort will pay off. Now, the 85%. So where is this 15% coming, 15% penalty coming? Let's take a look. So you can see here, we have the penalties for road types and we have alignment, auto link. So when we are aligning our, uh, uh, our monolingual documents and we have not confirmed them, they will receive a 5% penalty per auto link. Okay, that's one thing. And the other, if we have not completed our alignment the way we did, we would just need to check the box alignment is finished. But if we have not done so, we will see unfinished alignment documents and we will have a 10%. Okay, now, as you can see here, I already have, I, I, I forgot to, to delete it, but that's okay. Uh, I already have the keyword external with a 20% penalty. Let me change that for you, just, just for the sake of doing it together, right? So I will add the word here. Let me just write external. Now you need to make sure that you write it properly. This the same way it was written as the keyword in, in the LiveDocs corpus, because if not, MemoQ will not catch it. Okay, and let's add once again, a penalty of 20%. Okay. There we go. So uh, everything looks good. And let's just take a look here. As you can see, I am including document has keyword external. But I could also use document does not have keyword. So this is very useful with keywords, right? For now, let's click on OK. I will encourage you to explore the settings. And we can already tell our translator, you know what? I already included a penalty, let's be safe. Let's not think that our translators will know that we need to be careful with those. Let's just better penalize it so it's done. So we may remember that at the very beginning we had seen a 99% here, right? Now, let me update my project. Let me just synchronize it so that we get the new settings. And now we have a 79%. So we had a 1% penalty already. And now plus the 20% we included, now we have an, a 
Once again, this can be really useful because I'm sure we have all received translation memories that are of low quality. So yeah, you may not want to import that directly to, to your translation memories. Same with XLIF files, right? So this is a way in which you could still use them, get the benefit from them, get the matches from them, but also making sure that you are reviewing it before the results go to the to your translation memory, right? This is a way to make sure that you will have the utmost quality. I'm sure that we are all about uh, that, uh, cautious about that. Now, uh, I think that we had explained, yeah, I think we completed the live docs part. And so I wanted to, I wanted to mention interactions with other uh, modules MemoQ has. So let me show you that if I am here, I could come and do terminology extraction, as you know, and guess what? You can do it from live docs. So this is how you would be able to create term bases from live docs. Okay, I could just include them and uh, well, we would need to have a different session on terminology. You can check out uh, the ones we have in YouTube, the ones by Anna Mufaxi are awesome. So feel free to check them. But just so you know, you can always use live docs for terminology extractions. Imagine what you can do if you use the European Union texts. You could have very good term bases. One more thing, uh, if we go to, uh, if we are, uh, let me just go back to the other screen. Uh, we can also use the Muses, as you know, the Muses is predictive typing, but it's really, it's based on your own work. It's based on your translation memories, your translation memories and on your live docs corpora. So when you train them, you can, if I retrain them, you will be able to see that here I have my live docs corpora, right? So once again, this is something that you can do from live docs. And then if you're using predictive typing, then the translations that you, the, sorry, the suggestions that you will get from, from there will be really relevant because they could be coming from the documents you are feeding into live docs, okay? So that's one more module that's, uh, that we could uh, benefit from. And uh, yeah, so that is uh, two interactions. Of course, we can also mention the templates. If you are using templates, you already know that you can always attach your live docs corpora to your templates, be it one or more, they are present there, right? So this is where you would do it and you would be able to attach uh, any number of corpora. Okay, now the last part here, before we go to ADT, I'm sure ADT is one of the things that raised a lot of interest. Let's just take a look at what happened with our corpus. Let's take a look at the color code and see some kind of tweaks that I, I, would, I would mention, I would like to mention. Uh, we had already noticed that our video was gray, uh, was, was, was gray. Then we had the yellow showing our monolingual documents. We had this uh, turquoise or bluish color showing our aligned documents. And now that we completed an alignment, this became a glowing blue. Okay, so this means, this has a meaning. This means that we have completed this one. We could decide that we want to export that into a translation memory, right? And this, this is our bilingual XLIF. Okay, so this is also a color code that is, it is important to, to know uh, so that you can understand it. One last trick, and I will go to AGT. Uh, you may remember that we had seen this transition results uh, segment, and we didn't have the target, right? This is because, once again, this is coming from our English document. Now, you may not want to see those uh, results there. You may want to use your documents to be able to do concordance searches, but sometimes, uh, at least for some of our clients, it is annoying to find a translation results without an actual translation. So what you can do is click on the, the eye there and you will get the menu where you can decide what you will see in the translation results pane. And if you don't want to see those, 
you can just unclick this button, show corpus hits without a translation. And once that you click on OK, let's go back. It's not there anymore. OK, now I do find it useful to know that there's uh, something there. So that's that. And now AGT. Let's talk about AGT. Uh, we are good with time. Yeah, that's perfect. So to do that, let me go to my local projects. There we go. And here I have already set up a project. And let me let me tell you a bit about this one. This is a personal project. I just started for fun. Uh, if you find that weird, you should see my husband. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I I I bought a camera, and I wanted to translate the user manual, and I wanted to use live docs. But in the end, um, yeah, actually, what I, what happened is that I didn't find the Spanish version of the of the manual. So I, I thought it was a good way to practice and to to have fun. So I found the previous versions of my manuals uh, and I aligned the English to the Spanish and I created a term base from there using the term extraction. And there I, I started really playing with, with, with it. So I created a document so that we can see now and so that we can see AGT. As you know, AGT stands for Adaptive Generative Translation. And it is our AI-based translation automation technology. It uses a large language model, uh, Microsoft Azure Open AI, and it will use instant domain adaptation so that the results will be tailored to your needs. I'm telling you this because it's also important to know that it is essential to set it up properly. The idea is to be able to use your own data to feed it, okay? So for now, what I will do, uh, here I have my document, and I will try to, I will, I will pre-translate using AGT, but I also wanted to show you before we go, let me show you that I don't have, uh, let's check, actually, yeah, there's no live docs corpus. There's a translation memory, but, it's not, it's not selected actually. And there's a term base that it's, it's not selected. This is the one that we will use. It's not selected yet. What I want to show you here is that we will use raw ADT first, okay? So let's come and click on pre-translate and translate with ADT. For now, for now, I will not change the settings. Let's go and click on okay. There we go. So I want to call your attention to several things so that we can compare this raw AGT results with the ones that we will get once that we include our term base. Now, uh, in segment number one, I want to call your attention to shutter button, right? That was translated as botón del obturador. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Now let's go to segment number five. And here I want to call your attention to still pictures. Sorry, it was number four, still pictures. Imágenes fijas. One more. It's really a short document. It won't take too much of your time anymore. Now, one more. Lens was translated as objetivo intercam. Objetivo. This was translated well. Okay. Let me just check here. Because actually, this was aha. Uh, yeah. Now we can see that sometimes it's, it was lens. Yeah. Len, uh, it, it's translated some times as lente and some others as objetivo. Okay, so that's how uh, ADT did without any of our data. Now let's go and add my term base. Let's add, yeah, this is the one. And let's go back to translations. I will open my document and let me just clear the translations. Let's move it here and let's clear all translations. And let's click on OK. Yes. Now, I want to show you that this time in my glossary, I have lens as objetivo. We saw segment number one with shutter button. And I have it. It was, it was botón del obturador. And I, I now have disparador in my term base, right? And it was segment number four that I also called your attention to. It's still pictures. That was imágenes fijas. 
And right now I have still picture as photography. So now let's also pre-translate with AGT. There you go. And let's click on OK. Let's see the results. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is, again, shutter, shutter button. It was Botón del Obturador. This time we have Disparador properly translated because it's included in my term base. OK, now we, also, we can also see segment number four. And we also see uh, still pictures, fotografías instead of imágenes fijas. So this is properly translated once again because it's in my term base. And one more. Let's see lens. This time, all four were properly translated. And now we have some consistency because this is coming from my term base. This is from adding the term base only, and we already got more accurate results. Now, to save some time, let me show you. I created a comparison when I added my live docs corpus as well. And I want to show you what happened. So we already saw raw ADT. And we already compared together with AGT plus the term base, right? And we saw these results. Uh, you see, botón del obturador, imágenes fijas, and so on. Now, I added my live docs corpus as well. And this is what happened. First of all, if you are Spanish speakers, you know that here we are, we are using the informal style. And suddenly, when I added my live docs corpus, the formal style started to be used because this is the one included in the Spanish user manual that I had fed live docs with. We also have some changes like sobre was uh, translated then as acerca de, so about to. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, the rest are the same. And here, this is the one I also wanted to to, to show you. This is really interesting, at least to me. Uh, fotografías tomadas. This is a collocation. In Spanish, uh, photos are taken. And here, what we can see is fotografías grabadas, so uh, photos recorded. This is, to me, this one is better. But this is coming from the documents that I fed live dogs with. So we need to be careful how we will set it up, right? And this also goes to show why translators are still needed, because I need to decide which of these two is better. And I would be the one saying, you know what, this is a wrong collocation. We don't, uh, we don't record photos, we take photos. Okay, so that goes to show that uh, the hammer, good as it may be, still needs the carpenter. And that is, all I wanted to share with you, I think we are right on time. And so I would pass the, the mic to, to Ben Serpani uh, so that we can start with the questions. Thank you, Rose. It was a really, really great presentation. And we have a lot of questions as well. So let me just jump right into those. The mm -hmm. first one came very early. It was, I think, during the showing of the agenda. So it mm -hmm. might be that relevant at this point, but let me just say it. What is aligned and what is AGT? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, an alignment is the possibility to link two monolingual documents together to be able to pre-translate from there, to do concordant searches from there, and still get the whole document together uh, and getting the... The, the ordered sentences. So that is for the alignment. AGT means Adaptive Generative Translation, and it is the AI technology that MemoQ uh, developed. Thank you very much. Uh, the next one is uh, when we upload a web page into uh, in HTML to align it, does it include the whole website or only the page we are currently on? and we need to save each page separately to align them. Uh, I would need to do uh, testing with, uh, with that case. Uh, I would encourage the person to, to send me an email, to drop the, me an email, and we can see that. What I can tell you is that, as we saw, you can use filters in, in Live Docs. So when you import those, you would be able to use the HTML filter 
to decide what you want to import. But we can explore together. Thank you very much. The next one is sometimes a document contains both source and target languages. For example, training materials on how to translate. Uh, can you tell live docs that this document contains both languages? Uh, I would I would also like to ask the uh, our attendee uh, question back. Uh, is it what kind of file we are talking about? Because if it is an Excel file, of course. If it is an Excel file that contains both languages, you would use the very same file and through a filter, only import the, the column containing the source as the source document and with the same file, using it to import the target file and just defining the, the column that contains the target. So it really depends on the, on the file format, but yeah, if you can let us know which, um, file type you are talking about, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Uh, the next one is, uh, can you also view and edit if needed, or just uh, to give some context for the translator, the alignment on Memoc web as well, or are those features only available in the standalone PP version, I mean the desktop PP version? Yes, uh, for now they are available in the desktop. Um, if you pre-translate from the desktop, the, the web users will still be able to get the results, but would not see the documents. But I must say this is coming. I cannot tell you where, when, but uh, our developers are working so that live docs will be available on the web version. Now, one more thing there. Uh, if you are ICR users, and if not, please take a look. It's an awesome feature. Um, you can use live docs to share reference files with your subject matter experts. So that is the way in which you could use live docs in the web. Thank you. The next one is, is there a way to sort Concorder's results based on the penalty set on the corpus to, uh, it comes from? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Um, I don't think you can. I don't think so. I don't think you can. Yeah, let me let me get back to you to confirm, but I don't think that's possible. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next one is, what can you do with a video uploaded as live docs? Can you download it as a translator? Uh, and is it working on MemoQ web as well? Uh, let me share my screen once again to show what you can do. Yes, translators will be able to see it. Uh, they can download it and see hopefully it will not take too much time i'm sorry this is usually very quick it's just that i also have zoom working behind scenes so in any case you would what i want to show here is that you would be able to open the video directly from live docs there it is okay so that is the video that i had uploaded there this would be available again for translators too for sure so i hope that answers Yes, I think it does. Thank you. Uh, just to get back, we we had the question about uh, training materials, uh, mm, things that you know that if you can add, uh, tell live dogs that it has most languages in it. And mm -hmm. uh, who asked that it would be a Word document? It would be a Word document. Uh, mm, not from a Word document. No, we cannot tell uh, MemoQ what language that is. Uh, but what you could do is, if there, there is a clear uh, distinction, go ahead and paste it in a, an Excel file. It won't take too much time. Uh, if I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, for example, in a Word uh, table where you will have English and Spanish maybe, and then you could really quickly paste that into an Excel file, and then you would be able to import that to laptops. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is uh, for the AGT part. What documents were added to the live docs? I missed that info. Can you please show us that again? Ah, yes. Uh, I, I didn't actually show the documents, but let me do it right now. Um, I have them here. Let me share my screen so that you can see what I'm doing. Uh, there we go. It's screen number two. Uh, yes, you are looking at my explorer. Yeah. And so if I go here, 
I would be able to see the documents. So these were the two I used. So that is uh, a previous version of my camera. So that's what I did. And I also included the Spanish. Uh, I, I, I must say that I did some editing because it is a PDF. I feel like sometimes God thought that translators didn't have enough fun. So he decided to create PDFs. Uh, oh yeah, they are they are very difficult to to deal with. But uh, if you use an OCR, um, then you can include them for a better alignment because MemoQ can treat editable PDFs, but the alignment results are may not be the best. So uh, that's why I, I converted them to Word, and that's what I imported. I hope that answers to the question. Yes, I think it does. Thank you. And while we are on the AGT uh, subject, someone mm -hmm. asked, uh, can we use HTML files in live docs and feed them into AGT? Yes. So basically, yes, yes, uh, it's a yes. Basically, whatever you will feed live docs with uh, can be fed into AGT later, except for reference files that are binary. But other than that, yes. For an HTML, uh, let me share my screen once again. There you go. Uh, here, I don't have the best example because here, of course, we would be able to download the HTMLs directly. I would really encourage you to do that. Uh, this, this website is great. Now, um, if we go here, we would be able to save the website as an HTML file. And then we can align the and uh, sorry we can align it with Lightbox. And once that's done, here I would be able to save it wherever. And once that's done, then you could use Lightbox when you are uh, customizing your AGT. Thank you. Another AGT one. Uh, what did, what settings should we use for uh, term based uh, entities to make them work with AGT? I am not sure. Um, I am not sure when uh, what the question means. The settings with AGT. Uh, yeah, it, it just it says that what settings should we use for term based entries to make them work with AGT. Sometimes AGT doesn't take into account term based entries. I, I I would ask the, the person to get back to us and and give us the exact case because that has never happened to me so I don't feel like I can answer now. Okay, thank you. And we have last one AGT question at the moment, but please everybody just feel free to add any other questions to it. And this is: Can we still test AGT or is it only with paid sub now? Uh, let's get back to you on that one again because yeah, it's been some. Uh, a very short time in uh, since it started being a payable service. I'm um, not sure. I think we can still test it, but let's get back to you on that to confirm. As far as I know, we still have uh, the trial period with uh, 100,000 characters, I think. So you can you can definitely try it. Oh, uh, there you go. But yeah, we will get back to you with the proper answer on that one. Okay, let's move back to live talks. Uh, any tips to improve live docs alignment quality for badly or inconsistently formatted Word documents? For, for Word documents, specifically for Word documents, you can test use uh, you can test uh, anchors and uh, format. Let me let me share that with you. Let me open my screen one second. Uh, okay, so if I let me see why this is not uh, active. Okay, I still, I think I have a bit of a demo effect. Now, good thing it happened at the very last moment. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Uh, now, when I import documents, when I align documents, I would also see, I would also be able to use terms as anchors and use, um, formatting the basic formatting bold italic underline to get better results now what i would like to say there is there are great uh there are great youtube videos from kevin losner and from uh one of our 
lovely CEOs, uh, Balashkis, uh, that give tips uh, on several things. So you may want to watch that. Uh, so yeah, Kevin Losner and uh, Balash are uh, the references there. Okay, thank you. The next one is, is MemoQ planning on improving the alignment tool? We sometimes have a lot of issues getting a good alignment and we ended up having to use another cat tool. That's an unfortunate one. Uh, yeah, it is. It is unfortunate. What I, I am, I would need to, to ask developers so I could uh, get back to you. My impression there uh, is that we are working hard to send live docs to the web. So I am not sure about the, the alignment improvement. Uh, once again, I would encourage you to, to send those, drop me a line and send me uh, sample files so that we can analyze them together and maybe we will get better results together. But yeah, uh, it's a shame to, to be using a different tool. I'm sure we will find a solution. Yeah, I'm sure too. Uh, the next one is, can you have several source languages uh, in Live Docs corpus or do yes. you need a different uh, corpus for each source languages? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, actually, you can have different languages, but for source languages, if we are meaning um, alignments, I guess, then it's one source, one target. So uh, the Live Docs corpus can have many languages. You can have five, six languages to include, for example, Word documents, one in English, one in Spanish, one in Hungarian, one in whatever, French. So that is possible. You can have a multilingual live docs corpus. When it comes to alignments, once again, then it would need to be done by pairs, which means that you can have a five language uh, live docs corpus, and it could include alignments with those five language uh, languages. So you would just need to do the combinations, but it is possible to have a multilingual corpus. Okay, thank you very much. And it looks mm -hmm. like we arrived to the last question, which is, awesome. I did all alignment directly in the resource console without seeing the projects at all. Confirmed all segments since they were revised. Do I still need to do anything else in order to see my translation next time? I open the project, Live, Live Docs uh, has been added to the templates in project. I, yeah, I'm not sure about the question. So it seems like you aligned your documents. Actually, there is no need to confirm it. Um, as I mentioned, you would be able to align the, the documents and get results immediately. So there is no need to go uh, to confirm everything. Now, if if you didn't get any results, it seems like there was a problem with the product configuration because you should have. The only thing I can think of is that the, the source documents that you were to translate didn't find uh, matches within the laptop's corpus. Other than that, you should have seen results. So once again, feel free to, to send me a line and we can see that together. Okay, thank you very much. I don't see any more questions. So let me just thank you very much for the great presentation, uh, Luz Elena, and for your time as well. And uh, have a lovely rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye.